this is a piece that I wrote, um, and it's called A Stolen Kiss. His name was Eldon Smith, and he was part of a large family that lived near us on our small farm. My daddy got a kick out of him. His demeanor was probably influenced by his older brothers, especially Lester, who was about three years older. Once I recall, my daddy came home and told my mother, that little Dickens clenched his fist and shook it at me when I drove by while waving at him this morning. Small in stature for his age, Eldon more than made up for it when confronted with his tormentors. Punching, kicking, and even biting was cause for concern among the boys at school. With his coal black hair and big brown eyes, he strutted around daring them to tangle with him, even at six years old, a banty rooster with all of his feathers standing on end. My problem was Eldon seemed to think I was his girlfriend. Hey, I don't think so. I had eyes only for his cousin, Donald Ray, who was quiet with freckles on his nose and a lock of flyaway brown hair that fell in his eyes as he concentrated on drawing things. A talented artist, Donnie could draw horses. They seemed to prance across his tablet and I was fascinated by his skillful renderings of my favorite animal. Shy, I asked him to teach me how to draw them. With simple strokes from his lead pencil, he sketched step-by-step -step instructions, and I was enthralled. Soon infatuated and turned to little girl hero worship, and he became my boyfriend. Sitting beside him at recess and trying to copy drawing movements filled me with a kind of joy. Meanwhile, Eldon seemed to be chasing me more and more around the playground, but I was a darter and could usually manage to penetrate my older girl cousin's circle to elude my attacker, then wait for him to back off and go somewhere else to play. One Saturday, Daddy asked if I wanted to go with him over to the Smith's house to see about buying some baby pigs from Eldon's father, Henry. With the lure of baby pigs, I forgot about my predicament with Eldon. After the transaction, my dad leaned against our old pickup, and he and Henry settled into a comfortable gab fest. One of Eldon's younger sisters, Charlene, was a friend of mine as well. She and I decided to go see her playhouse. As we settled down around her old pieces of dishes and pans to start our mud pies, here came her brothers with Lester in the lead. With a squeal, we fled our homemaking duties and the chase was on. I may have been a darter, but I was no match for Lester. He grabbed my one arm and Eldon latched onto the other, dragging me screaming away from Charlene. She tried to help me, but was quickly overwhelmed and pushed aside. While Lester held me, Eldon sneaked up and planted a solid kiss on my cheek. I was mortified as both boys laughed with glee and left me standing speechless. Years later, when Eldon and I met for the last time, I recalled the incident and we both laughed together. I had surprised him by coming by his home to see him. Many years had passed and I had moved away when I was eight years old and lived my life in other places, but he had remained. Lester and I had also had a visit sometime before after I had moved back to the area. Cancer had captured Eldon and he wasn't doing good. He had asked Lester about me and had intended to stop by our appliance shop, but had never done so. On impulse one Saturday, I called his home and spoke to his wife, whom I had never met. I told her who I was and she said, please come as he has talked about you and wants to see you. Would you mind if I surprised him, I asked. As I pulled up into their driveway, a very handsome man dressed in jeans and a wonderful red shirt eased out the front door. The cold black hair was streaked with gray but as I looked into his eyes, I saw that same little Dickens looking back at me. I figured out it had to be you, he said. This time when he kissed me on the cheek, it was good. I have a prop for this one, so I hope it doesn't fall off. This is called 
Special Anniversary Edition. It all started innocently enough. My daughter Julie remembered a tradition she had started quite some years ago when she would purchase a crisp, new, color glossy People magazine for me every Christmas. As I unwrapped the package, however, there in my palm was a beautiful black and white glossy special anniversary edition of JFK. His handsome image graced the cover in his usual calm, laid back style, and he gazed out at me with his Irish handsomeness. During the aftermath of the holidays, JFK rested in the tray on the coffee table, where several guests picked it up and enjoyed flipping through or even sitting a moment to read. I also carried him to different rooms to read portions that were of interest. I even went so far as taking him to my boudoir. Several months later, I laid it down in the bathroom where JFK stared at me with those wonderful eyes, those droopy eyelids, that thick, unruly hair that had been combed into submission for the photo shoot. He probably had a barber that was in almost daily attendance, brushing, snipping, and making sure that Jack had every hair in place. It lay beautifully across his strong brow, and anyone could see plainly its seductive reddish-brown luster. Then I noticed the sensual lips as Jack and I shared a moment. Their perfection was almost perfect, especially with the slight smile hidden in their depths. Add this to the strong jawline, the straight nose with just a hint of an upturn at the end, and the blue, blue of his eyes were indeed a breathtaking picture. Even his small ears that glazed lay close to the barbered hairline were enticing. Before I go any further with this seduction, I should say that my fascination for presidents started long before this incident. Harry S. Truman was one of my current events idols in the seventh and eighth grade. His little round glasses, his jaunty hat brim, and that cane. Debonair was the word that came to mind as he strolled the streets and sidewalks of Independence in Washington, D.C. Everyone knew his heart belonged to Bess. Plus, I was, very, was, I was way too young for him. But the twinkle in his eye, oh my. Sadly, when I toured Doug Dwight's home in Atchison, he did not elicit even a stirring of my heart. I have always been a sucker for a uniform. Remember when gas station attendants wore those little ball caps and white striped shirts as they leaned over your windshield and would sometimes coyly give you a sidelong smile. Dwight had Mamie with her bangs, and later in his autobiography, clearly was involved with his Jeep driver. Also, I think he scared me, so much military precision. Then I think it was the trip to Arkansas, and touring the museum, museum with my sister Phyllis and her crush on Bill that, started, that put a damper on any of my amorous, amorous thoughts as it, I did not want to come between them. I only wanted to question the curator to ask where Monica's dress was enshrined. But Phyllis gave me her sternest teacher's look, so my innocent query would forever be unanswered. But for some unknown reason, later, an erotic dream, one of the best I ever had, starred Bill, and believe me, he lived up to his reputation. <laughs> that dog? So my encounter with him was somewhat memorable. Touring presidential museums, as everyone knows, is very educational. So during Christmas in Los Angeles last year, we all trooped off to see Ronnie. I was delighted to see the kaleidoscope of colored jelly beans on his desk in the Oval Office and another jar filled on Air Force One. His movie star looks and the way he rode his horse was so masterful that I soon fell for his image. But behind him in a lot of photos was Nancy. Nancy with her slim figure encased in glamorous gowns, smart suits, and doe-eyed looks to Ronnie in photographs. I didn't stand a chance. And even in my fantasies, she intruded. I still have a couple of jelly beans in my handbag, though. But I digress, and Jack Kennedy continued to beckon. Daily doses of intrigue and, a rom and romance can lead to trouble. So I tried to back off, but Jack was relentless. His reputation for pursuit of women was not just a rumor. Sailing with him was delightful. And that tousled hair, the suntan with that white smile, those sunglasses, 
However, his back pain began to interfere with physical activities. Plus, Jacqueline was always creating diversions like going to Paris, having those posh state dinners, making poor Jack dress up in those divine dinner jackets and tuxedos. I painfully realized that this relationship must stop immediately. It had gotten completely out of hand, so to speak. This morning, after weeks of anguish over the breakup, I can now look into those steady eyes and remember only the special edition reading times. <laughs>